Good day folks, this is Controlled Pairs with Controlled Pairs Gaming, and today I'm bringing you some footage from the new KSP 1.0, which left beta and entered full release last week. For those of you who have been hanging out here for a while, you know that KSP, Kerbal Space Program, is one of my favorite games. Today we're looking at one of the mechanics that was introduced with 1.0, that is resource extraction, manufacturing, and fuel production. Uh, I am planning on going to the moon and extracting fuel and actually extracting ore, converting it into fuel, and then putting it in orbit around the moon as a refueling station. This is a whole new mechanic introduced to Kerbal Space Program 1.0, and something I'm really excited about because it brings a whole new element to the gameplay. So, in order to accomplish this task, there's several steps. The first step is putting an orbital scanner in a polar orbit around the moon. So I've already done that, and we're going to jump over here so I can show you what that design looks like real quick. So standard launch sta stage, standard burn to the moon, and I've got this little guy in orbit around the moon. His orbit has an apoapsis of 33,000. Uh, you know, it's just a standard polar orbit around the moon. But the, the secret here, what you really have to do in order to be able to extract those resources, is affix this piece right here, the M700 Survey Scanner. So once you get your polar orbit and you toggle that overlay on, then go to your map. Wow, right? So now the moon is covered in this, uh, this gradient, which is actually representative. It's a rough sketch of where resources are located on the moon. So this is all part of pinpointing where you want to go drill whenever you actually get to your destination. So step one, get that orbital scanner in orbit around the moon, toggle your uh, UI on, and then and determine exactly where you want to go um, on the moon in order to extract your resources. Uh, you can get a little bit more specific by increasing your cutoff here. Uh, for example, if you go up to 50 or 60 percent, jump back into your map, you can see there's some spots on the moon that are now lit up. Those spots have more ore than the rest of the moon. So um, I plan on landing down here where my cursor currently is, and, and that's where I'm going to set up my mining excavation. So step one, get your orbital scanner up there, identify a rough area where you want to go to. Step two is send a rover to the moon. I've done that as well. So we switch over to it, and here's my rover. Let's fast forward to the moon light. There we go. Alright, so we use that orbital scanner above to identify generally where we want to go to. Then we set this, this rover up to the moon. It's got two scanners of its own on there. The first one is the M4435 narrow band scanner. We'll go ahead and activate that guy. The other one is the surface scanning module. Basically the way this works is you use the surface scanning module to scan the entire biome where you land. So right now you can see that the biome we're in is the east crater. I've scanned that biome and it tells me that the ore surface in that biome is 4.92% uh, 4.92% ore. That, that's the amount of ore that I could possibly extract from the soil. Then I go over here to my narrow band scanner. This is where you get particularly focused. This is where you pinpoint exactly where you want to go drill. You click this toggle scanner GUI on and it brings up this entire UI. This is brand new and it's a really fun aspect to the gameplay. So if I refresh it'll consistently update my location. Uh, my location is the intersection of this horizontal and vertical line. And right at that intersection, if I put my cursor over it, it tells me that where I'm currently located, I have 3.63% uh, or average where I am sitting right now. So you can drive around with this rover and pinpoint locations uh, that have higher percentages of ore, so you can really increase the efficiency whenever you bring your drill up here. So if, if I was to drive you know, further south and out to the west, I could get to this location where it has 6.745% uh, of an ore enrichment area. Um, so pretty cool little, uh, little uh, new gameplay mechanic. All right, now we're going to head back to the Space Center so I can show you what I've designed and run through a quick proof of concept. Um, and I'll do another video later where I actually bring my miner up. So my end goal here was to design a drill and a refining uh, vessel that could extract ore from the moon, turn it into fuel, and then put that fuel in orbit around the moon so that my spacecrafts leaving Kerbin could refuel en route to other destinations or maybe just increase the range of some of my SSTOs. Um, and so this is what I came up with. They're very crude. It's my first attempt, so don't judge me too hard for those of you guys who are just really, really good at this, uh, this kind of stuff. All right. So first, I'm going to send my, my drill 
up to the moon. I haven't attached the full launch stage or anything. This is simply a quick proof of concept. We're going to go ahead and launch this guy. And then we'll talk through its design and stuff once I get it over here on the ground. All right, so RCS on, SAS on, and here we go. We're just trying to get this guy um, off the launch pad and uh, just over here where we can mess with it a little bit. Start separating those initial boosters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Alright, so we're gonna set down my drill here. Let's go ahead and time accelerate. And get him on the ground there. Lovely. Alright, so here is my idea for a, uh, a Mooner drill. So as you can see, um, pretty simple design and some key components. Alright, so the drill is a drillomatic mining excavator. You gotta have a drill in order to extract those, uh, those ores from the ground. You can deploy the drill, the drill has to be able to touch the ground. Additionally, because the drill requires a lot of power, you need to bring a lot of power sources. So I've got um, some batteries attached, as well as, you can see these giant batteries, as well as a bunch of solar panels. We'll go ahead and deploy those solar panels and deploy that drill. And we will go ahead and start drilling. So as you activate the harvester, you can look up here, and you see ore is slowly starting to go up. You know, carbon's not too rich in ore. We'll go ahead and fill that guy up. All right, so there we go. We got, um, got some more. We'll go ahead and stop that drill and retract it. So now we've got our ore. What do we do with it? Well, we want to convert it into fuel. So what you do is you come up, up to this thing, the ISRU converter, and you start it and tell it to manufacture both liquid fuel and oxidizer. Uh, that's what I'm doing right now anyway, and that's probably what I'll use it for for the most part on the moon. Uh, after I activate it, you can see that uh, my liquid fuel is slowly but surely starting to fill up as my ore is starting to go down. So that ore is becoming liquid fuel. That liquid fuel is being stored in my tanks. So you get the general idea. That's, that's how fuel production is actually going to take place. We'll stop it. We'll retract our solar panels for now. Other key uh, design concepts, make sure you got some light because uh, you will be operating on the moon. It gets dark. You want to be able to see, especially when you're landing or you know, in the event you have to move around. Um, additionally, make sure you bring along a ladder to get your crew member to the ground. Here I've got Jeb, and uh, Jeb can safely climb all the way to the ground and then get all the way back up. That's going to be incredibly important for um, fixing landing legs or uh, you know, doing, uh, you know, planting um, flags or doing other EVA tasks. Uh, additionally, you want to make sure that you have a docking port. What is the purpose of doing all this mining and creating all this additional fuel if you can't transfer it to a vessel that is going to use it? So, I have placed a docking port right here on the side of that the vessel, and uh, we'll show you what that is going to be used for now. So, we'll head back to the space center, and we're going to jump back and uh, and we're going to launch our tanker. So now we've we've placed a satellite, an orbital scanner, and a polar orbit around the moon in order to locate generally where we want to conduct our mining. After that, we put a rover on the ground to determine exactly where we want to execute our mining. We've deployed our mining vessel, the actual drill, and the final step is going to be bringing this rover, or this fueler, to the moon and it's going to be a permanent vessel that is operated by a crew of three Kerbals uh, and will stay there and uh, its responsibility will be transporting that fuel from the surface of the moon into a lunar orbit. So I've elected to design a VTOL vessel here. That means it can take off and land vertically although it's not you know the most stable way to go about things on Kerbin so you know it, it, it's kinda tough to fly here on Kerbin but once I actually get it up there it's going to be uh, very beneficial to have that ability because it'll allow the craft to take off and land vertically in order to get up into orbit and then back to the surface of the moon. But then once it's actually on the surface of the moon, you can do just as it is right now and drive around horizontally just like a, a rover would normally do. So we're going to take this guy over to the drill that we've already landed. We're going to demonstrate that it can dock up with that drill, transfer fuel, and then uh, potentially get into orbit and deliver that fuel to another craft, which is going to be such a valuable asset. And it's just fun. I mean, 
being able to think with these new game mechanics in, in more creative ways is just uh, it's a lot of fun. And you can look throughout YouTube. You see other guys doing it different ways. This is just the way that I've decided to do it. And I'm definitely no expert. I mean, there's guys out there that are just so talented. Um, but uh, I have enjoyed doing it. And it's going to be even more fun to try to get this thing actually on the moon. The launch stages are just going to be silly. And, um, you know, I've never been the most talented as far as orbital freaking calculations and, and whatnot. I, I tend to always make mistakes up there. All right, so now that we've arrived over at our drill, you do just like you would in space. Go ahead and set your target docking port as the target, and then get this thing lined up. And um, a little bit tougher to dock. Here I am trying to talk and dock at the same time. A little bit tougher to dock on the surface than I thought it would be just because you have to get the crafts lined up perfectly. You don't have that benefit of the lateral motion that you do in space. And so if you don't have it just right, you end up with <laughs> all sorts of problems. Here I'm not lined up good enough, so I don't think I'm going to get that connection. Nope. I'm going to have to back it up a little bit. Come at it more straight on. Still not good enough. Here we go. All right, don't make fun of me. Don't do it. <laughs> there we go. So, and then once I get this thing docked, I can go ahead and turn the brakes on so it doesn't, you know, cause any damage to the vehicle. And then you'll be able to not only manufacture your fuel in this craft but then transfer it to the freaking tanker man so as you can see that docking point allows you to transfer fuel back and forth between the two vessels which is outstanding alright so now we've got a full up freaking tanker we can undock that guy go ahead turn off the brakes back him up and then uh, take him to the moon, man. Take him to the moon. All right, folks. I hope you enjoyed the video, and I hope you're enjoying Kerbal Space Program 1.0. If you like what you saw, do me a favor and hook me up with a thumbs up and uh, comment on my video. Let me know if there's anything you want to see. And uh, until next time, enjoy Kerbal Space Program.